<sighs> if you want it or not, I'm going to put on the glasses and this time it's going to work out or doesn't not. <sighs> I will try it on with both on and off anyways. Hi, hello, young. it's me again, Lea Matilda, coming at you with a new video. And I thought that today I would go outside of my concept again because this has been what I've been doing lately. And today I decided to talk about the power of misrepresentation slash under-representation in media because I have seen that y'all out there like to misinterpret how minorities are and that's a big problem. So without talking too much, let's get down to business. And don't forget to subscribe, shall we? So I watched this one video on YouTube about Muslim women reacting to bad representation on YouTube. And this video just freaking hit home. I remember watching it and thinking, this is so true. Everything they said, their reactions, I could feel it. I thought, dude, same. This video was just another wake-up call. Popular TV show producers think that what minority people want is for people to see them on the internet or see them in TV shows. Yes and no. Yes, we do want you guys to see who we are and, you know, see more of people who look like us on TV. But no, because we don't want to go out there or be in your movies and TV shows, see people who don't actually act like literally any regular human being would act like. In Elite, Elite, a very popular Spanish Netflix show, there's this one Muslim character, Nadia. She has had my heart since the beginning of the season, but at one point she took off her hijab at a party just for a freaking boy. And I thought, even when I saw that episode, I thought, I don't think that any Muslim woman who actually loves her hijab would, would do this. In Orange is a New Black, there was one Muslim woman. She took her hijab off when once there was a fire warning around the building. Was the hijab flammable? Even I don't understand. And you know what modern day people call this? Misrepresentation. <laughs> Media wants to portray minorities just the way they want us to react to them and this is not okay. But, I, but I'm just talking, I'm just saying it, I'm just stating it out there. For people who watch these shows, it will seem as if for these Muslim women, the hijab is some sort of oppression. Which if you watch this video that I had mentioned before, you know exactly that this is not the case, it's literally the contrary. It's a sign of freedom for them. Yet how are we going to know this if everything we see about them is always in the same light of them not being happy with their hijab and their religion? How are we going to understand culture if it's always misinterpreted, if there's always scenes like these shown on these TV shows? How are we going to know that this is women's choice if all we see on the internet, on TV shows, in movies is how much they want to get rid of it. I don't understand why there is a need to make them feel different or to interpret them in a way that doesn't even come close to the truth. And one of the girls in the same video said something that I could not agree more to. She said, the issue isn't how a woman dresses, it's about people wanting to control how she shows up and how much access to a woman they feel like they are owed. Can I get it? An applause. Modern minority? Asian people have a hard time as well. While I was watching a video of a boy with a very attractive voice and very good makeup skills called Pierre XO, I have been more aware of their misrepresentation slash underrepresentation of the Asian community in TV shows. I have been also aware that this is not a compliment. <laughs> the terms associated to the Asian community, they're either incredibly smart, good at math, domesticated, nerdy, fetishized, passive, good at- and the list goes on. Movies about Asian families always show that the most important thing for their children is to literally be like, eh, can't talk to you, I need to become the best doctor in the whole entire country. I don't think anyone can relate to this. I don't think even half of the Asian population can relate to this. I'm gonna take the glasses off for just a second. Hi. <laughs> I think they don't understand that 
they have also other things that they like. I mean, they're not always doctors. What if they don't want to be a doctor? What if they don't want to be these polite and <laughs> good and calm and not ever saying anything neighbor next door? Some of y'all want to go out and party, want to be this and that, and you have nothing to say because these are just stereotypes. These are just representations that are misformed and that don't have anything to do with the actual truth. Thank you. I don't know if you remember this, this one girl in this Pitch Perfect movie, the Asian one, who literally spoke like that the entire movie. If she even talked in that freaking movie. What are you saying? What happened last year? This is a misrepresentation. This is an exaggeration. This is a hyperbole. This is a problem. Media even created this immensely perfect picture of the Asian woman. I don't know if you remember the video where I talked about Gronish and I said that Asian women are at the top of the list because the Asian woman is kept under the image of being a sex-craved housekeeper. What is meant by that is that, you know, she's obedient, she's very attractive, she's very humble, she's very, you know polite and everything and in the media's misre misrepresentation i think that shit gets to go i think this is just so hard to see because you're either the way too smart i don't know never have i ever main character <laughs> or you're too attractive to even function because of a white man's perspective on how sexually attractive you are ghetto crimes illegal stuff and drugs Welcome to the world of Latinos and black people. The freaking misrepresentation that every single Latino and black person literally does that and you know it's far from the freaking truth. The worst part is that these two minorities are always represented in a light that are either into this whole ghetto and gangster scene or way too, way too, way too sexualized. There's no in-between. There's literally no in-between. Thank the Lord for people like Shonda Rhyme who actually give black women the chance to be something more than just whatever. Who has the idea of not putting a story about racism or about the poorness or anything on black people. I mean, we have How to Get Away with Murder, we have Scandal. I don't watch any of those, but the protagonists are black, so... <laughs> I'm 100% sure and convinced that these stereotypical, misrepresented characters that are either way too sassy or even louder than my vacuum cleaner have nothing to do with how people are in real life. I'm not like that. I don't think you are like that either. And that is why it is necessary for us to be represented in a light that we can all relate to. Just make a regular character that probably looks like me, <laughs> that acts like me, I don't know. Just someone who can be themselves without having to deal with racism, without having to deal with what you think is ghetto, without having to deal with drugs or anything. Just make a normal human being. I mean, I don't walk around talking about drugs and everything. Neither do you, neither does your mom, neither does your neighbor. But why do we see that on TV all the time? Make it make sense. And as much as I love love to laugh at Jazz and Sky from Gronish, but they're not relatable at all. They're made out to be so rude most of the time that I wonder how the hell would someone in real life even be friends with people like that. I feel like that's a message that they want to give us. Don't follow what they want to say. I wish there were more producers like Rhymes and Kenya Barris, the producer who did Blackish, Gronish, Mixedish, and Black AF, even though there's still problems here and there. But they get the message. They talk about very human and necessary subject. They have a good presentation of black people. I mean, yes, they could have more dark-skinned people, but at least they got some, and this is a big step forward already for us. I mean, like I said, we want the normal people on screen. We want the Laura Jeans, we want the Maddies, we want the three from the bold tie protagonists, even though two of them are white, but whatever. We want more women like Marseille Martin. We want more Ren Yan, aka Kyol Kyung from IOI, Stan My Kids, stream their song, thank you. And we just want many more women who can do it. Asian people, Muslim people, we want more black people, we want more Latin people, we want more of the minorities and feel as if there is a place for us in mainstream media. Because as of right now, no hay mucho. And if we were there, it's not always a good representation of who we are, if you get what I mean. 
Imagine just having one show where they don't need to talk about racism, about race, about any freaking stereotype associated to one of these minorities. Imagine, imagine the power that this movie, the show would freaking hold. Take an example from shows outside of America. Maybe they do it better. Maybe they understand that we're all just freaking human beings and there is space for everyone out there and we should appreciate every single one out there. Misrepresentation is not going to do any good to anyone. Give people of color more realistic screen time. Let us shine a little bit. I mean, we deserve it too. You know, people grow up watching TV and if they watch, they grow up watching shows where there's always this weird representation of a minority, they will continue on thinking that this is the way that they should treat them, that this is okay to talk to them like that, which is not. Is that the end of my video? I think that's it's the end of my video. I just wanted to talk about a subject like this because I've been very interested in humans lately and I guess I just wanted to share it with you. What is your opinion? Do you think I am right? Because if you don't, I want you to leave my page. <laughs> because misrepresentation is a disease and I guess that's everything I wanted to say. Please don't forget to subscribe if you have other ideas of things I could talk about on my channel because like I always say, I'm not the best at giving my opinion. I'm not the best at talking about specific, very serious subjects, but I want to try it and talk more, I guess. So yeah, please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay alive. Please subscribe, like I just said. And see you in my next video very, very soon. Adios. <laughs>